White House has formally announced President Biden will visit Saudi Arabia next month, as well as Israel and the occupied West Bank. Biden's expected to meet with both Saudi King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. As a candidate on the campaign trail, Biden pledged to make Saudi Arabia a pariah following the brutal assassination of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. And I would make it very clear, we were not going to, in fact, sell more weapons to them. We were going to, in fact, make them pay the price and make them, in fact, the pariah that they are. But Biden has taken a different stance in recent months as global gas prices soared. His talks in Saudi Arabia are expected to focus on oil production, the war in Yemen and other regional issues. For more, we're joined by Sarah Lee Whitson, lawyer for Khashoggi's fiancé in a lawsuit against the Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman for Khashoggi's murder, his dismemberment in the Saudi uh, consulate in Istanbul, Turkey. She's executive director of Democracy for the Arab World Now, or DAWN which Jamal Khashoggi founded. Welcome back to Democracy Now! We only have five minutes, Sarah Lee, but I'm wondering if you can respond to this just complete reversal of President Biden, from saying they're pariahs to going to meet with them. Uh, it's a very dramatic capitulation to a very clear red line that President Biden had announced, perhaps off the cuff. Um, but I think it is in response to a massive amount of pressure uh, from the defense industry lobbies, from the Israeli, Saudi and Emirati lobbies, uh, and the confluence of the war in Ukraine that has driven up oil prices, uh, all of which have uh, resulted in uh, pressuring uh, President Biden uh, to do what he clearly didn't want to do, which is go and kiss the ring of Mohammed bin Salman. Um, I also want to note that uh, the notion of, of whether or not Biden is going to meet with Mohammed bin Salman is a bit of a red herring, uh, because the real concession here, uh, what the Saudis and Emiratis have been demanding uh, in order to continue to purchase American weapons, is a security agreement, a defense agreement that will, will commit U.S. troops uh, to defending uh, the Saudi and Emirati monarchies. That is what President Biden is going to deliver in Riyadh. That is what we should all be very worried about. And what about the continuing uh, massive weapon sales uh, uh, under the Biden administration, not only to the Saudi Arabia, but to Jordan, the United Arab Emirates uh, as well? Well, I mean, the, the, the truth is in the pudding. Despite uh, the promise from President Biden that you just heard that he would end weapon sales to Saudi Arabia, it was very clear from the beginning of the administration that that was not going to happen. Saudi Arabia is America's largest weapons client. Uh, it is the largest weapons client in the world. And number two behind it is the UAE. Um, Everybody knows what the right thing to do is, and that is to end weapon sales to these heinous governments, uh, given their atrocious war crimes for six years in Yemen. Uh, but ultimately, the Biden administration has succumbed to the pressures of defense industries and the foreign government lobbyists to continue what are very profitable arms sales uh, for the defense industry. Certainly, this doesn't suit uh, or serve the interests of the American people but it very much serves the interests of major donors to the Democratic Party, major donors to the Biden administration, and that is the lobbyists that represent the defense industries and the foreign governments. I was watching uh, John Kirby, the spokesperson for the Pentagon, questioned about whether he'll raise human rights. And he said, well, he does do that kind of thing. We it kind of expect he will. Uh, but what about, for example, is there pressure being brought to end your lawsuit on behalf of Khashoggi's uh, fiancé um, for the dismemberment of um, Khashoggi, the murder of Khashoggi? And we're not only talking about one man here, also the dismemberment of Yemen, the atrocity that is one of the worst humanitarian catastrophes in the world, with U.S. weapons-backed Saudi Arabia bombing of uh, Yemen. Well, just to be clear, the lawsuit uh, is a lawsuit that Dawn has brought in its own capacity, and Khadija Jengiz, uh, Jamal's widow, is our co-plaintiff. We are jointly together in this lawsuit uh, for the murder and torture of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, and 
And we know that uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman has demanded uh, that the Biden administration interfere in our lawsuit to grant him immunity. That's not going to happen. It hasn't happened so far. Uh, but if he ascends to become king, he will have sovereign immunity. The other defendants in the lawsuit will remain, and we are waiting for a verdict from the court on their motion to dismiss our lawsuit. We intend to prevail. We hope we will prevail. Um, I should note that uh, today we will be commemorating the murder of, uh, of uh, Jamal Khashoggi by Mohammed bin Salman uh, by unveiling a new street sign in front of the Saudi embassy uh, uh, at 1 p.m. Uh, that I think is the most important act of commemoration and accountability that exists to date, a permanent street sign in front of the Saudi embassy reminding them and reminding the whole world uh, who was responsible for this heinous crime. Very happy to see a truce in Yemen, uh, but let's face it, this is a face-saving exit for the Saudi government from their catastrophic, futile war that has caused nothing but destruction and brought zero gain, uh, even for uh, the Saudis' nefarious plot uh, to contain and control Yemen. So the Saudi Arabian con uh, embassy will be on Jamal Khashoggi Way? Uh, that's right. Uh, the new address of the Saudi embassy, and we hope Google will adjust its maps to reflect that, is officially now Jamal Khashoggi Way. Uh, that is designated by the Washington, D.C. City Council, which unanimously approved Three seconds. Uh, our efforts to redesignate the street. And we hope you all watch the unveiling of the street sign today at 1 p.m.